Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Moon Lacquer. In today's video, we are doing the second half of April's release calendar. So we are catching up on any of the brands releases that I didn't talk about in part one, either because I hadn't heard of them yet or because they hadn't been announced. But there were actually quite a few that were newly added to the calendar as well as the second half of April that has since filled in since the last release calendar video. So we have a lot to talk about. We have probably a good double the amount of brands and releases to talk about since part one. So let's not dilly dally. Let's jump into the first one, which is Cleona Cosmetics. This one released back on the 12th. They released a Chaos collection. So it was a very unique collection. You can catch Caitlin Swatches swatching the entire collection. She also does have a code that you can use Caitlin Swatches to get 6% off of your order. And this is the collection. So we have eight pieces and I did have a few of these on my wish list. I have yet to purchase them, but the last couple of months, my low buy has kind of gone out the window. So um, I have been having to reel myself back in to not buy all the things. But I did have Smedge Haze on my wish list. This is a stunning polish. It is a warm jelly brown base with contrasting bright green aqua purple shifting micro flakes very unique polish. I love the brown base with those shifting flakes in it. You can see purple, aqua, and green. Absolutely beautiful polish. Cleona Cosmetics has very good pricing on these polishes. The downside, at least for me here in the United States, is they are a Canadian brand, which means that shipping is quite a bit more than what we are used to when you are purchasing indie brands within the area that you live. So it's just something to keep in mind. I also had Flying Buttress on my wish list. This one looks dazzling. This one is a teal, purple, pink, orange, yellow, shifting multi-chrome pigment juxtaposed by red to yellow shifting flakes and a linear hollow finish. This one looks like it is going to dazzle in person. The swatches on Caitlin Swatches videos were just incredible. There are rainbows upon rainbows in this polish. So those are my top, top, top two picks from this collection. Although pastel yellow also really caught my attention in the swatches again from Caitlin Swatches. It is a muted mauve base with a golden sheen and a linear holographic finish. So mainly what caught my attention is the hollow. The hollow pigment that Cleona Cosmetics uses is beautiful. What kind of cut this from my wish list is the fact that it has such a prominent gold flash in it. I would prefer it to look how it does here where it is more purple. It's that mauve base, but I'm worried on my skin tone, it's going to look like this with that blaze of gold on the front. So that one is not on my wish list. Um, another one that did make it to my wish list, if I were to make a purchase, is this one called 10 Drops. It is such a cute color for spring. This one is a creamy bubblegum pink base with a pink shimmer, teal metallic microflakes, and a touch of iridescent cobalt lime flakes. This is so stinking cute. So if I were to make a purchase, this would probably be up there in my cart as well. I just love this combo. And another one that did make it to my wish list as well is Boop. This one is a sheer aqua tinted base with sparkling aqua to indigo shifting larger particled shimmer and a smattering of red to yellow shifting iridescent flakes. Perfect as a topper or on its own. So this is one where again, when Caitlin swatches swatched this, it looked gorgeous in a single coat as well as built up. So that one is a gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer. Love the aqua coloring as well. So that was Cleona Cosmetics, their Chaos Collection. Again, available now. Next up, we have Kathleen and Co. They released on the 12th as well. They released a butterfly and maybe flowers collection. Again, I think I saw it on Caitlin's swatches. So we have Purple Hair Streak. This one did make it to my wish list. It is a dusty plum base with a glowy blue shimmer. This is gorgeous beautiful. I love it when purple and blue are mixed together. The other one that I had on my wish list was Petunia and 
bummer. It looks like it is sold out. I waited too long. Uh, but like I said, I am trying to sort of rein myself back in. I did have this one on my not buying this month, even though I did have it on my wish list. But Petunia is a bubblegum base with a glowy blue shimmer. So again, one of my favorite combinations. I love pink bases with a blue glow. Just cannot get enough of those. All right, next up, also releasing on the 12th. My goodness, the 12th had a busy, busy time with Indie Polish. We had Mythos Lacquer, and they released their Azeroth collection. And I didn't really have anything on my wish list from this brand, but I did want to try to keep track of what they were releasing. Most of these are not quite to my taste, but again, we're here to talk about what's releasing, not just what's on my wish list. So they have these five polishes as well as a top coat. They also have a smoothing top coat, a blurring base coat, the duo and some cuticle oil. So they have a purple, a very interesting flaked green, a yellow, like a golden yellow with some green flakes, a black jelly with some like copper flakes, and a blue that has a number of different colors of flakes in that one as well. So very unusual, very interesting. Next up, the Probably the biggest release for the 12th was Mooncat. Everyone was chomping at the bit to find out when their new collection was releasing, and they released Songs of Sirens. It is nine polishes, and actually the collection is sold out, but you can still get them individually. They released a thermal called Treachery in Blue. That was on my wish list. Another on my wish list is Am I Everything You Fear? This one looks absolutely stunning. I am holding out for the sale though, so I did not grab anything from the collection just yet, but this one looks just stunning. It is a dusty deep teal lacquer filled with color shifting pink to orange to green shimmer and micro holographic glitter. Again, absolutely stunning. This one will be mine eventually. And here's just a quick little comparison of a few other colors in the Mooncat library. Siren's Revenge is also a really beautiful like aqua shimmer. This one is also on my wish list. A most destructive melody. Again, absolutely jaw dropping. This is a multi chrome. It shifts between shades of blue and purple as it's viewed from different angles. So, yeah, just beautiful. And here it is again compared to other colors in the Mooncat library. So, you can see particle size difference, shift difference, and all of that. Also, the Sea Between Us might have to be on my wish list, as well as Maelstrom. Maelstrom is definitely on my wish list. This one is a deep blue-green jelly lacquer filled with color-shifting green to yellow iridescent flakes and micro-holographic glitter. This one is very, very mermaidy. I love the contrast that this one has, where you have that teal base and then those green flakes on top, just very eye-catching. So that one is on my wish list, as is Ghost Ship. This is one of their magnetics. It is a royal purple magnetic filled with blue shimmer and micro holographic glitter. Again, just a stunning, stunning color. I love the deep shade that it turns to when it's magnetized. Another gorgeous color. The rest of the colors, like Quicksand's Embrace, I really don't think that's going to look very good on my skin tone, but if that has what I'm actually thinking I'm seeing, does that have a hollow? It does. It has a subtle silver holographic magnetic stripe. That is really, really pretty. I was thinking it was just silver, but I am worried that this wouldn't look very flattering on my skin tone. It looks great on this swatcher, but hmm, well, dang it, now I'm second guessing. <laughs> It is very pretty, but again, this kind of a color can be very hit or miss. Again, on this skin tone here, it's looking more of a beige, a grayish, that topiness on this skin tone. It is looking very like dusty pink. So this is one that I feel like you're going to really have to keep in mind your skin tone, how you like this sort of a color. The lighting also seems to play a huge difference in this one. On the left, you have direct lighting where it looks much pinker and in indirect lighting, it's going to look more neutral. So again, this one didn't really catch my eye initially, but that hollow stripe is calling to me. <laughs> But in any case, that was what Mooncat is releasing. They are still currently available as of filming. 
another release for the 12th. The last one was a brand new launch, a new brand called Arcana Lacquer, and they released a Fabled Woodlands collection. It was a seven piece collection and you can buy the whole thing for a discount price, which is actually fantastic. If you bought them all together, it would be $84, but $70 for the entire collection, which is practically, no, it's over getting a free polish. Wow, that is quite the discount. So for this brand, I did have a couple on my wish list. Veiled Sphinx was one of them. I cannot get enough of this kind of shimmer. This is a light taupe dusty rose jelly base filled with pink to orange to yellow shimmer that reads much more red in direct lighting. So this one is absolutely beautiful. A little bit on the neutral side there in the base. So I'm wondering if this would make a good layering polish over other colors, but that blaze of shimmer is so beautiful. Here it is on the darker skin tones and wow, that is very gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. So here it is again, maybe built up with more coats. That is more how I would probably wear it. And I love how that looks. That taupe base really comes through. This I'm wondering if it was maybe more like one or two coats, or maybe there's just a difference in application. But in any case, that one did make it to my wish list. The other one on my wish list was Encounter with a Fay. This one is a berry purple jelly base layered with green flakes and purple aqua green shimmer. So again, with purple and flakes, this one definitely called my attention. It is very, very pretty. So I need to decide if I have room in the budget to make another small purchase of at least two polishes, but this one would definitely be one I get from this collection. It is very, very pretty. Oh, and I forgot to mention the pricing on this brand, but they are $12 a bottle and the bottles are 15 ml. So that was Arcana Lacquer. All right, so now that's it for the 12th. My goodness, again, the 12th was very, very busy. Next up on the 14th, we had HHC. That one I did already share on my previous video. Next up, we have the Polished Gamers Box, and I have already shopped this. I think the theme was board games for this month. One that made it to my wish list that I did end up grabbing was Plus Life Lacquer Know What I Mean. This one will sell for $13 and it is still available at least as of filming. It's available through the 20th. So I'm trying to get this filmed and edited so that you guys can still take advantage of this if you so desire. But Know What I Mean is described as a white crelly with an aqua shimmer, fuchsia and aqua metallic shards, and navy hollow hex glitters. I don't have anything like this in my collection and I was really excited to see this one because I love the color combination. So here you can see some of those shards are coming off as little triangles in here. This one definitely caught my attention, sort of gave me the nostalgic feels and yeah, just really loved this combination. So got that one. Again, that was plus life lacquer, know what I mean. The other thing that I did end up grabbing was Ribbit's Stick It's the Witch Doctor in their acetone additive. This scent sounds like it is going to be fantastic. So it is based on Dr. Facilier from Princess and the Frog. And this one is described as sweet tobacco blended with whiskey, red currant, citrus peel, followed by amber, oak, pine, cedar, cypress, white geraniums, and vanilla, ending with vetiver, sandalwood, dark musk, and sequoia woods. Wow. Talk about very, very complex. All the woods, you've got that little bit of sweetness coming through from the vanilla, maybe a pinch of floral with the geranium, which I'm hoping will not be super, super in your face because I mean, look at all of the other things that are in there. You've got all of those woods, the dark musk, vanilla, amber, oak. I mean, wow, just wow. So I definitely got the double-sized acetone additive, which I was a little bit thrown by at first, uh, when I saw the price on this, because most of the time the acetone additive is roughly between four and five dollars, six at the most, but this one is eight fifty, and it turns out it's because it is a double size. It's thirty mL as opposed to fifteen mL. But if you aren't in the market for more acetone additive, they do also have it in hand and cuticle cream or a roll-on perfume oil. Another one that I definitely grabbed is from Cuticula. This is Betrayal. It's $13, comes in a 15 ml bottle. It is inspired by the game Betrayal and is described as a violet green gold shifting multichrome with larger and small silver holographic flakes. So this is one that for sure caught my attention when I saw spoilers of it posted. I 
adore how many colors you're seeing. I mean, look at that bottle shot. Wow, you're seeing fuchsia and purple, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And of course, the silver flakies. So this was an absolute must grab. If I got nothing else, this one would have been it. It is just absolutely beautiful. I love this kind of polish from just about any brand, but this brand really does make these beautifully as well. So definitely grabbed that one. That again was Cuticula's Betrayal. Another one that I did end up grabbing is Lemming Lacquer's Crystal Magic. This one was $13.25, comes in a 15 ml bottle, is inspired by the Crystal Magic in Dungeons and Dragons, and is described as a luminous violet jelly where delicate teal to blue to purple microflakes dance amidst lime to gold iridescent shreds while flakes shift seamlessly from verdant green to radiant gold to shimmering copper with silver holographic micro sparks sparkling like celestial stars. So wow, purple and all the flakes. <laughs> that micro shot right there is definitely what sold this polish. That one and this juicy, juicy purple base. I adore the combination of all of those flakes and particles that is used in this one. It looks incredible. Look at that giant flake that made it to that nail. Wow. So yeah, as a purple fan, this one definitely caught my eye. Initially, I had skipped out on it, but I did end up going back and making a second purchase for that acetone additive once I discovered the reasons for the price difference and ended up grabbing this one as well. I really can't wait to see this one in person. I think it is going to be stunning. Another one that I did end up grabbing kind of on a whim because this one really spoke to me is Night Owl Lacquer's Loud Librarians. Gotta admit, it's kind of a 50-50 if it was the name that caught my attention or if it was the color, but this one is $13. It will come in a 15 ml bottle and was inspired by the word game Really Loud Librarians. It is described as a dark olive green base filled with glowy large particle shimmer that shifts copper, green, and gold. So I thought this was such an incredibly interesting green polish. If you're new to my channel, while I do like greens, I feel like this particular shade of kind of a chartreuse-y, prugly -ish shade range is still fairly narrow in my collection. And I really liked the different shifts that this one had. So you have this sort of peridot green, but you have gold in it. In certain lights, the olive base comes out more to play. I really, really liked how this one ended up looking and I could envision this on my nails. So I did end up grabbing this one. This is one of the few times, at least recently, grabbed something completely on a whim that was not even on my radar. But this one just really, really spoke to me. I had it in my cart and I was sort of hemming and hawing and I did end up grabbing it because, I mean, look at that. That olive with the bright green is just so interesting. So had to grab that one. Can't wait to wear it. I'll probably end up wearing it as soon as I get it, hopefully. So that was Night Owl Lacquer's Loud Librarians. And I think that was it for on my wish list for Polished Gamers Box. But as you can see, they have four whole pages of other polishes and items. You can get scrunchies, you can get tic-tac-toe, you can get stamping plates, plenty of other polishes. Um, the one from All Mixed Up Lacquer actually did catch my eye, but I did end up skipping it. It's called Let the Fur Fly, and it has a really beautiful combination of shimmer with acrylic base and micro glitter. Ultimately, though, what I decided for this one is the shimmer is mostly that golden orange, and I just wasn't sure if the gold would be more predominant on my skin tone, so I did end up skipping that one. But that was Polished Gamer's Box. Next up, Little Box of Horror just opened today at noon. That is, at least as of filming, a little over an hour ago. The theme for Little Box of Horror was Stephen King Resurrected, and it starts today, April 18th, and it goes through the 30th. So for this one, I did have five items on my wish list. The first one is from Drunk Fairy Polish. This one is called Tommy Knockers. It is a glow in the dark topper. So Toppers have definitely been something I am not necessarily in need of, necessarily. I do need to go through my rack of toppers and do comparisons and all of that, but this really caught my eye. I adore the combination that the maker came up with. There are flakies and of course the glow in the dark aspect. There are micro glitters. The glow on these flakies is 
stunning. So the description of this one is it is a topper with an aurora flaky that shifts from blue to purple to red to gold and even green at the extremes. It has a smattering of violet to red flash reactive glitter in a bright green glow in the dark base. So here's how it's going to look in the dark. Then of course, even on its own as shown here, it is just beautiful. It's got this sort of a bluish, purpley, pinky glow. I love it when you have a ton of different color combinations pulled together in one polish. Here it is over a purple base, which of course I've got to love. I love how the reflective glitters look in this, adding a little bit of a sparkle twinkle to it. So yeah, this one is really, really pretty. I only recently discovered Drunk Fairy and I really liked the ones that I ended up grabbing from the brand. So I've been trying to keep track about what they're releasing lately. So this one definitely jumped to my wish list. I mean, look at the glow in the bottle. Whew. So that was Drunk Fairy Polish Tommy Knockers. Next up on my wish list is another new brand, at least to me. I know I've seen them around, but I have yet to purchase from them. This is Humble Bee Polish. Don't go out there. It will sell for $14. There's only a cap of 70 of these available. And this one is described as a blackened violet base with black to red shifting microflakes and red to orange aurora pigment. So this looks so pretty, very, very vampy. You have that red glow and you're gonna have two different kinds of red because you're gonna have the red popping up in the black to red shifting microflakes and then the red popping up in the red to orange Aurora pigment. So very beautiful combination. Strikes me something that I don't really think I have and I love the deep violet base and of course, Look at that. This is very reminiscent of how a UP would look in this base, that UP pigment of red to green to gold. Simply stunning. There isn't, as far as I can tell, any green in this, but you are gonna get that beautiful red to orange glow. So absolutely gorgeous. Love the particle size in this. So that definitely made it to my wish list. That was Humble Bee Polish Don't Go Out There. Next up is Night Owl Lacquer and another Prugly Green. Can you believe it? <laughs> this one is T-Rex Doesn't Want to Be Fed. It will sell for $13, come in a 15 ml bottle. This one is an olive green Crelly filled with black red multi-chrome micro flakies and black red orange multi-chrome flakes. So this is another instance where this is such an incredibly unique polish, especially to my collection. I love that there are two different kinds of a flake in here. So you're gonna get multiple shifts no matter what angle you're seeing your nails in. Love this against this deeper olive base. And here it is matte. Wow, very, very pretty. Here it is again, glossy. Just such an incredibly interesting polish. So this one really caught my eye as well. That was Night Owl Lacquer's T-Rex Doesn't Wanna Be Fed. Next up is Sassy Sauce Polish, I'm in Heaven. This is $13. There's actually a rather big cap of 300 bottles, but this one is a lightly tinted blue base with a strong purple, pink, copper, golden green shimmer and blue reflective glitter. So this is another one of my favorite brands and I love the combination here. This time we have a reverse of the combination that I'm always talking about in a pink with a blue shimmer. This time it is a blue with a pink shimmer and it looks gorgeous. So cannot wait to see this one either. I love the micro glitters that are added here as well. You get that sort of a blue speckled look. And also here it is layered up over uh, at least black on two nails. I don't know if on the other nails it's over a white or if it's just on its own, but this one definitely has versatility as a topper. So again, love the combination. That was Sassy Sauce Polish, I'm in Heaven. And then the last one on my wish list for a Little Box of Horror comes from Victorian Varnish, and this is SSDD. This one is described as a deepened base with a sparkly purple to blue magnetic line. When magnetized, reveals a gorgeous large particle shimmer in aquas, blues, and teals. So this is incredible, especially that bottom left hand here, this one right here, where you can see this almost blurple magnetic pull, and then you have the green particles in this darker base. This is gorgeous. But that last one on my wish list for a little box of horror was Victorian Varnish SSDD. 
Next up, one of the things that I saw come out again today, it is, I think, through email, is Cirque Colors is having a 20% off sale. So check your email if you're interested for that. I think it's like friends and family get in early. I don't know what time it releases for like general audiences, but if you are subscribed to their email blasts, definitely check your email if you are waiting to purchase a few items from Cirque until they had a sale. I honestly don't know how it compares to like say their Black Friday sale, but again, it's something that I heard about. So just sharing it with everybody. Uh, they did also recently release a new collection. It is their Twisted Tea Party collection. And I don't think any of these really ended up on my wish list, but thought I'd let you guys know about that sale in case you do have that email blast or were waiting on a sale. Next up tomorrow, at least as of filming, I might actually post this tomorrow. So if it's the 19th, it's today. Um, but Bee's Knees Lacquer has a new collection coming out. And for that, their website is down at the moment or locked with password. But here it is on their Instagram. They have a lot of beautiful colors coming out. Here is an overview of their collection. So nine pieces based on the book by Kristen Sicarelli. Heartless Hunter might be the collection name. So here is their nine piece collection. They do range in price from 14 to 1450, it looks like. So it depends on the kind of pigmentation used. And there were a few that made it to my wish list for this release as well. Oh, they also have Grateful, which is releasing as a charity polish. So make sure to check that one out as well. But yeah, I don't see any previews on their Instagram for the charity polish, but the ones on my wish list for the collection is Earth Sunderer, Arcana, and the Crimson Moth. So Earth Sunderer is a grungy brown with strong purple to pink shimmer, which is this one here. Arcana is a red to gold multi-chrome with violet to blue magnetic shimmer, which is this one here. And then the Crimson Moth is this one down here that looks like a burnt peach. It is a brick red with glowy green shimmer and loaded with hollow flakes. That one seems to be a chameleon on some skin tones it looks as described that brick red color and on others like this one here it looks more like a burnt peach so that one seems absolutely incredible and pretty unique to my collection so three made it to my wish list so yeah for that one three out of nine is not bad and then of course the charity polish and those again will release on the 19th also releasing on the 19th is lurid lacquer's new collection called re-emergence this one is an eight piece collection and as always you can get it as a full set collection with a discounted price. And on this one, a few did make it to my wish list. Again, we'll have to see how many of these I actually end up getting because the last month or so has been a wild ride for polish for me. Beloved did make it to my wish list. This is beautiful. This will sell for $14. It is an indigo jelly base with iridescent flakes that shift from blue to purple, rose gold metallic flakes, silver light reflective glitter, and a sprinkle of Aurora pigment that shifts from blue to purple to pink. So you know it's going to catch my attention when it's an indigo, a blurple of any shade range because I adore those. And this one has a very beautiful mix of ingredients in it with those iridescent flakes, the rose gold metallic flakes, which I honestly don't really see a ton of, but they, they might be scattered in there very sparsely compared to the other items. And then here's a beautiful sort of direct but indirect lighting to see that reflective glitter. It is very, very pretty. I will say this one is a little bit on the dusty side, so I do need to compare this to a few polishes that it's reminding me of, potentially from Illyrian. So I'll have to just compare what I already have just to make sure, but I did really like the combination in this one. Make of this terrifying gift is another one that made it to my wish list. It's 1450. It is a cool pink base with purple to pink to red shimmer, rose gold metallic flakes, and a sprinkling of linear holographic pigment. I really like the shade of this pink. It is a beautiful kind of like fuchsia leaning color but it has a dusty quality to it it's very pretty again this one does have the scattering of those rose gold metallic flakes but it is a scattering so it's just going to provide that little bit of a sprinkled look of that rose gold very very pretty and actually in this it might look denser depending on how close you can see your nail but beautiful combo love this tone of pink you have grown so vast and boundless also made it to my wish list 
Although I will say this might not be one that makes it to my purchase if I do make an order, but this one is a periwinkle base with pink to orange to gold Aurora shimmer that shifts to green at extreme angles. Again, it's that periwinkle base that definitely caught my attention, but I will say this one, at least in photos, seems to land a little bit more on the blue side of things. And what I'm currently in the market for, as far as a periwinkle goes, is something that's a little bit more purple leaning. Although I will say on this skin tone here, it does lean a little bit more purple than the other photos. So it just sort of might depend on skin tone, but it is a beautiful color and I love the glow that pink to orange to gold Aurora shimmer, but that one was You Have Grown So Vast and Boundless. And then I have it on my wish list, but I'm having second thoughts about it. Was this comfort now constrained to you? I think this is another one that might be too, too soft for me. Uh, but this one is $14 and is described as a semi sheer lavender curly with a pink to orange to gold Aurora shimmer. So yeah, this one is a sheerer base and probably going to be very delicate on the nail. And I don't know, at least lately, I really just haven't been feeling stuff that's super, super delicate. Although here, if you have darker skin tone, this looks incredible. <laughs> So if it looked that blazingly shimmery on my skin tone, I would be all over it. But yeah, I think for my own skin tone, which is a lot lighter than that, I feel like it just won't look quite as incredible. But I mean, look at that. That one was This Comfort Now Constrains You. That was the new collection from Lurid Lacquer. Next up on the 19th as well, Dom Nail Polish is releasing their Stormy Sibling Collection. So they released Shimmer Storm as I think a group custom and they decided to go ahead and release five other polishes that were siblings to it, which means that they're gonna have the similar formulation of a curly base with a color glitter and a flaky. So we have Flashing Flood, Iridescent Ice, Twinkling Tornado, Lustrous Lightning and Glistening Gale. Then on the 22nd, we have the Indie Box. And for this month, it looks like the theme is bee, wild and free, as in the bee, the insect. So they have a lot of bee themed items like color changing lip oil here in a little like beehive shaped container, bee scrunchies, bee stickers. You have flower stickers as well. So very, very cute. They also have this absolutely gorgeous sunflower like mosaic type mouse pad for only $12. I thought that was really nice. Um, the only polish that ended up catching my attention for this release was the Victorian varnish. And ultimately I decided I didn't need it, so it's not on my wish list. but this one is called the Pollinator. It will sell for $14 and it is a thermal. So it is described as a black when cold to clear when warm thermal with an intense blue glowy shimmer and a heaping dose of rainbow ghost flakies and chameleon flakies. So this one is absolutely gorgeous. I like that for the most part, it doesn't really read, at least in most of the pictures as a black, it reads more of like a blue, but it's also for that reason that I didn't end up adding it to my wish list because I feel like the blue is reminding me a lot of Portrait of an Introvert from Mooncat, which I just recently got. Now, Portrait of an Introvert does not have this kind of iridescent flaky in it. It has blue particles in it. But something about this just very much reminded me of Portrait of an Introvert. And since I, again, am trying not to buy all the pretty things, I did decide that that was good reason enough for me not to go ahead and grab this one. But that was the Indie Box. Next up on the 23rd, Ethereal is releasing a new collection. And again, their website is currently closed. So we're gonna take a peek at their Instagram page. And I think their new collection has something to do with the ocean or sirens. Yeah, siren shades, 12 new siren shades. So a number of these did make it to my wish list as well. The Real Creature is a beautiful shimmer polish. It is very, very pretty. There's no descriptions listed, but this one has a gorgeous larger particle shimmer in what looks to be kind of like a purple jelly base. Love this shimmer, love the shifts. It's gonna look greener in certain lighting, bluer in others. So beautiful shifter there. The other one that was on my wish list was Lament, and it is a deep sapphire blue glow. The person who did the swatches of this said that it was absolutely incredible, very, very glowy. So that one definitely made it to my wish list. And there's a few more in here that caught my eye, but I don't know what they're named. 
<laughs> there was a magnetic in there towards the beginning of this clip here. There's Lament. That one. It's that first magnetic where it has this sort of a lilac base with a blue glow and then a silver magnetic line. That one definitely caught my attention, but again, I don't know what that one is called. But in any case, that was the Sirens collection coming out for Ethereal on 423. Also coming out on the 23rd is Smidgen of Us box. It will sell between the 23rd and the 30th. So for this one, the website again is not open, but you can go to their Facebook page for spoilers as you can with other collab boxes like Hella Handmade Creations and Polish Pickup. So the theme for April is movie night. So they're gonna have a number of movie themed polishes. Just for privacy sake, you won't be able to see the spoiler thread on this one but if you want to go to the group you can always see the different polishes but wildflower lacquer does have a polish called being normal is not necessarily a virtue which is based on practical magic and it looks like a very beautiful complex color it is described as a purple to red to orange multi-chrome packed with holographic flakes and scattered red to gold to green crystal flakes. This looks incredibly complex, absolutely gorgeous. Again, Wildflower Lacquer is one of those brands that rarely, if ever, disappoints. So that is on my wish list, even though I didn't write it down on my little spreadsheet here. It's one of those boxes <laughs> that I hadn't really looked through just yet. Off the Hook Creations will be releasing another crocheted cat toy. So if you are a cat mama like I am, you'll probably want to at least check out their toy. I am, still have yet to make the jump and buy a cat toy during one of these events. I want to say that Off the Hook Creation also does cat toys for like Polish Pickup, Hella Handmade Creations, and I want to say they're in quite a number of collab boxes, but this one is a little shrimp based on Forrest Gump. It says their cat Ari didn't want to be in the photo, hence her grumpy look. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that is also going to be available. Another one that seems rather interesting, I don't know if I'm gonna get it, but it's called They Were Cones from Sizzlin Shades. This is a glitter topper that has neon glitters in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors based on The Wedding Singer, one of my favorite movies. So this is definitely like screaming 80s and 90s to me with all of the neon colors. There are some like, not quite bar glitters, they're a little bit longer than that, so I would almost call them like hair glitters. I don't know if that's quite the right term or not, but we'll just go with long bar glitters. But also they are black light reactive, I think is the term. There's also going to be some earrings offered by Burned Offerings, inspired by Encanto. So that was a smidgen of us box that again will be open April 23rd through the 30th. All right, just a couple more. Uh, Lemming Lacquer is releasing a quad on the 26th. I know this was a lot. If you have hung in here, thank you so much for sticking with me. Uh, for Lemming Lacquer, I didn't really see anything on their Facebook page. I have yet to get into their Facebook group as of filming, but Latani from Lacquer to Lashes does have a live swatch of the quad. So if you wanted to check that out, I'll include the link down below but it has two red polishes and two magnetics. And uh, yeah, all of them made it to my wish list. So yeah, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> But beautiful, beautiful colors. I, I'm bummed that I don't really have any pictures to share with you, but like I said, that I didn't really find any out there at the moment. Uh, speaking of Latanya of Lacquered Lashes, if you don't already follow her on Instagram, this is another fantastic way to not just get previews like I've been trying to do on my release calendar videos, but she actually gets PR, so she swatches all of the upcoming things. So this is another great way to just sort of scroll through her feed and see what other things are coming up. So she has Coloris to Carol with a Mother's Day trio, Kathleen and Co. in the garden, all mixed up lacquers, crushed gems, sassy sauce with an April duo, the lemming lacquer that I mentioned, polished gamers box, Dom nail polish, sparkle and shine box, hella handmade creations, glistening glow, the list goes on and on. So fantastic place to see live swatches and to sort of get in on the fun with the nail polish community. There's also a Lacquer to Lashes live group that you can join for more fun and shenanigans. And then the last one is from Monarch Lacquer. So this is another one where I didn't really see anything on their Instagram or their Facebook page. So I honestly do not know where I saw 
that they had a new collection releasing. So we'll have to see as the date approaches. Again, that is on the 30th. So we have at least a what, two weeks, almost a little over a week and a half uh, until that does release. But I don't have anything other than the fact that they do have a release coming up. But in any case, that's the last one to go over. I'll list links to everything down in the description below. But yeah, hopefully you guys had a good time sort of seeing what else is coming up for the month of April. Let me know which ones were your favorites or if you know of anything else that's coming up. As always, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day and I will see you in that next one.